Here's a really interesting dimensional analysis question, which if you're a first year engineering student doing fluid mechanics, the theory behind this, uh, behind this particular problem, which is related to capillary phenomena, this is probably something you don't actually know at this point, but from a dimensional analysis point of view, you don't actually have to know that to be able to do this question. So this question will be done purely uh, from a dimensional analysis perspective using units. So the theory behind it is essentially something like this. So if you have a very thin tube or if you have two, two glass plates which are very close to each other and if you submerge this in, in a liquid, what happens is the liquid will actually rise as you press the two glass plates together and you'll have sort of this uh, shape going on here. So the closer the two metal, well, the closer the two plates are, the more you're going to observe this uh, shape, this curved shape of the of the water surface. And here there's there's going to be an angle of theta with respect to the horizontal, and that's the same as the the angle on the other side. And this is possible due to something due to a property that liquids have, which is related to surface uh, tension. So surface tension essentially is a force per meter, right? So it's the Newton per meter. That's those are the units uh, of this. So you don't need to know any of this to do to do this question. So to solve this question, you just need to look at the units of all of the variables and combine them into those non-dimensional groups. So the first thing I would do is obviously read the question. So the capillary rise H of a liquid in a tube. So H is essentially how much the liquid rises vertically in this case. It varies with the tube diameter D. So that's the diameter or the distance between the two plates if you want. Gravity, fluid density, and surface tension and the contact angle uh, theta. So the first part of the question says, find the dimensional statement of this relation. Okay, so let's look at part A. And to do part A, the first thing I would do is just list all the variables that the question gives us. So I'm just going to go through the question and I'm just going to pick them up one by one. So first of all, we have H, we have D, we have G, we have density, we have surface tension, capital Y, and we have theta. So we have six variables. And those six variables are going to have different units. So let's actually look at the units of the variables. So first of all, the height or the capillary rise. This is, uh, you can say this is measured in meters, but I'm not going to use meters or centimeters or anything like that. I'm just going to say that H has units of length, okay, just to keep things more general. So I'm just going to put an L here. And then I'm going to say that the next one, the diameter is going to have units of length as well. Yeah, let me just remove the SI because we don't really use SI units. And then we have G, which has units of, so this is an acceleration. So Normally, you'd say this is meters per second squared, but meters is means length and second is time, and that's it. Or you can just write as L T to the minus 2. And I'll do the same with the other. So then we have density, which is kilograms per meters cubed, so that's M L to the minus 3. And then we have the tension. Okay, so tension is newtons per meter okay so let's write it like this we have newtons per meter now a newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared and this this is divided by meters so we can actually cancel out this with this and this is just going to be a kg over second squared so this is going to be kilograms which is mass and then s to the minus two or t to the minus two like this and then finally we have theta so uh, theta is an angle and angles don't actually have any units you can't say it's measured in anything that has to do with meters or kilograms or seconds so i'm just going to write no units okay so 
we've established this. We have six variables, and if we apply the Buckingham Pi theorem, so we're going to subtract the number of unique units so we only have three units throughout our six variables so we have l we have m and we have t so each variable is a combination of those three in one way or another so for example h is just l to the power one uh, rho is m to the power one times l to the minus three so that's a combination of l and m and then same goes with y and then theta has no units which you know you can say this is equal to if you want, you can call it L to the zero, which is one, so no units. So you do six, the number of variables, minus three, which is the number of unique units, so that's going to give you three, and those are uh, three pi groups. So our pi groups are going to be pi one, pi two, and pi three. And now the idea is to group the six variables in one in some way or another within those three pi groups so each pi group will be formed of three repeating variables okay so we have three repeating variables and one main variable uh, in this case so the repeating variables are going to be taken as those three now technically you can choose them in whichever way you want but given this problem and given the fact that the problem wants us to find for example h and we also have this surface tension here uh, to look at i would say that h y and theta those are our main variables so the repeating variables d g and rho those are going to be present in each of the pi groups so we have d g and rho and then we have d g and rho once again okay so the other three variables that are left are going to be h which let's i'll put it here let's use a different color for the main variable so we have h we have the surface tension y and then we have the angle theta so each pi group has one main variable and three repeating variables so the next thing to do is to look at each pi group and turn that into a non-dimensional variable. So let's start with pi 1. So pi 1 can be written as follows. So I'm going to have h. Now the main variable is h in this case, which means I'm going to leave this to the power 1 as it is. And then the other three I'm going to write as d to the power a times g to the power b times rho to the power c. So those powers are unknowns but they have to be such that whatever comes out of this whole multiplication should have no units so let's actually write the units for each variable so h is measured in well that's a length uh, diameter d that's also a length to the power a g that is an acceleration so that's l t to the minus 2 power b and then we have rho which is m l to the minus 3 to the power c right so this should be l to the 0 m to the 0 and t to the 0 this is so that we end up with no units so let's actually write the l's the m's and the t's together so l is going to have the power 1 plus a and then plus 2b and then minus 3c and then we have m to the power of c and then we have t to the power of minus 2b and that is l to the 0 m to the 0 and t to the 0 what we do now we just compare the exponents and that's it so we have this is equal to this we have this has to be equal to this and we have this which has to equal to this so let's start with the m because that's easier so we just have c is equal to zero then we have those two which tell us that b is equal to zero and then the last one is one plus a plus two b minus three c is equal to zero so that will give us that a will be just equal to minus one because b and c are zero right 
So that's it. So for the first pi group, we found that A is minus 1. We found that B is 0, and we found C is also 0. So the first pi group becomes H. Right, so I'm going to write this again, but this time I'm going to replace the powers, the, the previously unknown powers with their values. So we have h, we have d to the minus 1, and then we have g to the 0 times rho to the, to the 0, which I'm just going to ignore. So that's it. The pi 1 is just h over d. Which, if you think about it, this is a non-dimensional parameter, because h is a length, d is another length, you divide a length by another length, you end up with no units. Now let's do the same thing with uh, pi 2. So pi 2 is given by this. So we have uh, y, our main variable, which has, which, which has power of 1. And then we have d to the power a. And then g was the next one. So g to the b and rho to the c. <laughs> okay. Now keep in mind that in this case, a, B, and C are different from those A, B, and C. Technically, I should use different notations for those, but I'll just keep them as A, B, and C. But keep in mind, they're different than what we found previously. So, they should have no units. Okay. So, let's write down the units for each variable. So, for Y, we have... Uh, what do we have for Y? We have this. MT to the minus 2. So, we have mt to the minus 2 times diameter, we know that's a length to the power a, g is uh, an acceleration, so that's lt to the minus 2 to the b, and that's m l to the minus 3 to the c. So this is m to the 0, l to the 0, t to the 0. So let's take this with us, and let's find a, b, let's find the new uh, a, b, and c. So this will turn into m to the power of, so this is m to the power of 1, so this is 1 uh, plus c, multiplied by l to the power a plus b, and then minus 3c, and then we have time to the power minus 2 minus 2b, and that is m to the 0, l to the 0, t to the 0. And as before, we're going to compare the exponents. So we have 1 plus c is equal to 0, which means c is equal to minus 1. We have this one as well. So we have minus 2 minus 2b is equal to 0, which means 2b is equal to minus 2, so b is minus 1. And finally, we have a, which we can get from here. So we have a plus b minus 3c is 0. So A is 3C minus B. So this is minus 3 plus 1, which is minus 2. So we've got A is equal to minus 2. We've got B is equal to minus 1. And we have C is equal to minus 1. So our second pi group equals capital Y to the power 1 times this, D to the power A. So a, we just got it as minus 2, so that's going to be to the power minus 2. Then g to the minus 1, and then we have rho to the minus 1, just like that. So if I turn this into a fraction just to get rid of those negative powers, this is y over rho g d squared. And that is the second pi group. Now for the third pi group, I'm not going to repeat the process because, well, one reason is that the, the third pi group is... Uh, is pretty trivial. Okay, you can choose to write it like this. So, d to the a, g to the b, and rho to the c. But if you think about it, this should have no units. Obviously. But also, theta has no units. Okay, which means that if if the total thing has no units, and if this has no units, it means this thing must also have no units. And the only way in which this can have no units is if a is equal to b is equal to c and is equal to zero. So the third pi group is just 
equal to theta. Okay, because theta by itself is non-dimensional. It's, it's non-dimensional by default. So this is what we ended up with. We have the first pi group, that's h over d. The second pi group, that is the surface tension over rho g d squared. And we have the third pi group, which is just theta. So the, um, the question is asking us to, to express that statement in a non-dimensional form. So here's how you do that. You just say that h over d is a function of the other two pi groups. So it's a function of y over rho g d squared and also a function of theta. And that's the answer to part A. So dimensional analysis doesn't actually tell us what this function is. Is it a squared relationship between this and this and this or what is it? We don't actually know, but we don't ever, we don't actually care either. All we care about is that this non-dimensional parameter is a function of the other two non-dimensional parameters okay and that's all there is to part a now for part b we have to use this to do some calculation so it says if h is equal to three centimeters in a given experiment so if this liquid goes up by three centimeters in some experiment what will h be in a similar case if the diameter and surface tension are half as much so let's underline a couple of things what will h be in a similar case if the diameter and surface tension are half as much the density is twice as much and the contact angle is the same right so let's actually see how we can uh, write this up so in the first experiment let's call this experiment one we can say that h1 over d1 is equal to a function of y1 over rho 1 g d1 squared. I'm going to assume g is the same for all experiments. Right? We do the, the experiment on Earth and then we have theta1. And then for the second experiment, so let's actually write that here like this. So for the first experiment and for the second experiment, we've got h2 we've got a different h2 we've got a different tube diameter but it's the same function of the new surface tension over rho 2 g d2 squared and theta 2. right so we have to find this basically and what we know is uh, i think what we know is yeah we, we just know h1 so we know h1 as three centimeters and the question is asking what is h2 so let's look at what what the question is telling us in terms of the those ratios of surface tension diameters and so on now on one hand it says that the contact angle is the same for both okay so if the contact angle is the same for both it means theta is the same for both so there's no reason in calling it theta one and theta two it's just theta one for both Okay, now let's take this here and let's see what we can do with it. So the surface tension 2 over rho 2 g d2 squared can also be written as follows. We know that the surface tension is half as much. So the surface tension uh, is half as much as in the first case. So this y2 is y1 over 2 divided by and then the density 2 it says the density is twice as much which means that this is 2 rho 1 times g and the um, and the diameter is also half so the diameter would be d1 over 2 and this is squared okay so we know that y2 is equal to y1 over 2 we know that rho 2 is equal to 2 rho 1 and we know d2 is equal to d1 over 2. That's what the question tells us and of course we also know theta 2 is the same as theta 1. So if we write this out like this we end up with y1 over 2 divided by 2 
row one g and this is d1 squared over four so this two and this cancel out and then this cancels out with this so it turns out we'll end up with y1 over row one gd1 squared which is exactly the same non-dimensional parameter as the one for the first experiment so it turns out that what actually happens in those uh, well in this function is that theta doesn't change and this this variable this non-dimensional variable doesn't change either so although we have a different surface tension we have different density and different diameter the combination of variables in this non-dimensional parameter is such that this ratio will be the same as this ratio so if this is equal to this and if this is equal to this it means this is equal to this and that's what we're going to use to find uh, h2 so um, we have h1 over d1 will be equal to h2 over d2 so h2 is going to be equal to h1 d2 over d1 so h2 is h1 which is i think it was three centimeters uh, d2 is equal to d1 over 2 so that's d1 over 2 over d1 so this is 3 over 2 which is 1.5 centimeters so that's the answer for part b if those variables change in the second experiment in this particular way only then will uh, this quantity be the same as this quantity here so you can do a cross multiplication and find what h2 is and that's because the arguments of the function are the same so the theta and the non-dimensional surface tension are the same for both experiments and in that case we have what we call um, similarity and that is the end of the question